Welcome back everybody. Today I have two houses and a new shirt. We are trying out these new shirts, kind of polo style. It's not typically ideal uh, because it's so humid in Houston, but it's cooling off a little bit and I wanted to give it a shot. So uh, this is more for like marketing purposes, uh, not so much field work in Houston, that is. So uh, first house I'm headed to is with Mark and Josh Gibson. They, we have my lead inspector and one of our inspectors. They are doing a brand new build, 2022. And then after that, I am headed back down south uh, with Mark too as well, and we're doing a 2016 home. So two houses. That should be a pretty good video. I should get enough content there. And uh, let's see what we're gonna go find. Let's go check it out. Well, then you're a licensed professional home inspector. If you see any crack, don't do this. Okay, we got a few good finds here. Um, the first one is, is we have a tankless water heater in the garage, but this outlet is on all the circuits inside uh, the whole garage and major appliances need a dedicated circuit. So um, good first find. Okay, here's another one. Uh, we have two condensers on the exterior of the structure and we have no outlet for servicing. Outlets are required within a certain distance of the condensers on the exterior so they can service the units for maintenance. Another quick find right here, we have a jetty tub and there is no dedicated GFCI or dedicated outlet just for the jetty tub. So, um, oh, it doesn't look like there's access for it too so you need access uh, to the motor easy access to the motor and a dedicated outlet that is part of one of the updates all appliances water heaters furnaces ranges dishwashers all require a dedicated outlet to run the appliance but we are in the backyard of the property and we have stucco on this the structure and I just want to show you everything that is done right. I always come around and I tell you everything that's done wrong about stucco, but this is pretty much a perfect installation of stucco. So this is nice. Uh, let me, let me review it with you. On the exterior of the structure, you can see that we have proper clearance from the ground all the way around the entire property, even on the pillars. This is where they mess up a lot. They'll do stucco all the way to the ground. So it is uh, separated too as well. You come up to the top, you see how the wall continues here and uh, the roof line stops. They have kick out flashing at a 45 degree angle and it protrudes, so that looks really good too as well. If you look close to the gutter, you have separation with uh, from the gutter and the wall that helps prevent uh, water damage on the stucco. Looking at the windows here, check out the windows. You have overhead flashing on all the windows which is really nice. Also, they added in a gap. So in the caulking there, caulking is actually not required above this overhead flashing, but people like to do it. But they also left the gap. So if water does get behind these windows here and it leaks, there is a drainage path so the stucco can dry out and it'll prevent major damage to the property. You also have control joints underneath all the windows here which is nice, and then control joints every 144 square feet on the property. So, I mean, this is pretty much textbook installation of stucco. This looks really, really nice, really nice. Uh, let's come over here to the door real quick. You can see even here in the door, I understand this is underneath a patio, but they just pretty much stay consistent, which is nice, but they even have overhead flashing over the doors and added in uh, weep holes were not needed. Also here you can see they even added a weep screed here just in case you know the roof leaks or anything like that happens. There is a drainage path for the water for the behind the stucco. So really really well done and it's so well done it's overdone in some areas which is nice. You can see they just install it the right way no matter what even if it's underneath an area that can't get water. You can see here they continued adding the control joint underneath the windows and above the window too as well. Same thing, they have the, the 
the flashing above a window, overhead flashing, and uh, spots for the water to drain. Right here on the exterior shutoff for the electrical on the property, they even sealed up around the box. But look, look right here, you look underneath, you can see they didn't seal the bottom, which is done correctly, just in case there's a gap or a hole behind the top here or, you know, age uh, where the caulking expands and contracts and adds little gaps in these areas, water still has a path to drain underneath uh, the panel here. So perfect. This is a perfect uh, install of caulking for stucco. You no, know, that seems which you would say a little picky or whatever, but honestly, those little things in stucco, that is what causes the major damage is the areas where you just caulk that panel wrong and then you have all this water build up over a period of time. And then it's so wet and humid in Houston and water will actually make it behind the wall. It will sit there and it doesn't dry out. You can see we're in a shaded area not a lot of sunlight's going to hit this wall and it will actually rot out the entire wall when it comes to stucco so yes caulking is super important and keeping it maintained for your stucco structure so uh really really good job builder good job wow look at this even uh these windows are installed really well perfect and then coming right underneath where you think how the water's gonna drain, right? You think that there's uh, no weed screed here, but if you come back and just look just underneath, boom, they have a drainage path for the water just in case the uh, windows leak. So it'll help prevent damage uh, along this line. I highly doubt they'll have any problems with this uh, stucco at all. Whoever installed this stucco did a fantastic job. Uh, you just don't see this that often. Quick update, I have been having the team record their videos. Is it landscape or portrait style? <laughs> I don't know um, how I'm recording the video now uh, on their cell phones so I can do the montage videos again and it won't be you know the cell phone videos for youtube so you get the black spots so make sure that you hit the like and subscribe button to catch the montage videos i did get the a, a few complaints on those because uh it, it was hard to watch on your tvs and your phones for youtube content it will limit the instagram and tiktok content but we actually make a little bit of money for youtube so i might as well try to keep you viewing here <laughs> so um that's it. So we are headed to a 2016 property after this one. This is a pretty well done new build. We're always going to find something and it just shows you the importance of getting an inspection even on a new build. Okay, uh, walking up to this property, it was like, it was pretty standard and uh, there's nothing really major wrong with it. So I'm gonna do this to help out any new home inspectors. As soon as you always graduate, the you know champion school of real estate or you know you took some sort of a hit education course to become a home inspector and you get out in the field and you're a licensed professional home inspector if you see any crack don't do this I mean, any new inspector we always train this happens every single time look 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 oh got a crack oh man Foundation issues, definitely, definitely foundation issues. Oh, oh, expansion joint, caulking, separation, foundation issues. Oh no, we got a crack here. Hey, we got a crack over here. Crack here. Crack here, oh. Foundation issues, foundation issues. Trim board and wall separation. Up, 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 quarter pop. Foundation issues, 100, 100% foundation issues. Thermal pane, the thermal pane lost its seal. Movement of the window caused the thermal pane to lose its seal, foundation issues. A whole piece of the foundation missing on the corner. Foundation issues, 100%. That's movement all the way. Inoperative exhaust fan, foundation. Separation in the countertop. Foundation issues, yep, 100% foundation issues. Well, the 
roof looks good too. Not much to write up there. Sorry for the wind. Uh, looks pretty solid, sealed up nice, no real damage. Even the satellite is sealed up nice, which I don't even get to write out of. So uh, someone definitely took good care of their home or did a pre-inspection maybe and uh, corrected all the issues before we even showed up, which is good too. I do recommend that. Not a lot of people do it because the market moves so fast, but it is starting to slow down. And if you do want your property to move a little bit quicker, then uh, um, maybe pre-inspections are coming back, which would be nice um, for me and uh, for the buyers too. As uh, that's me going on a rant again. All right, let me let me get off this roof. Okay, all joking aside, you know this does happen a lot, and it's just because the threshold of the business is pretty low to get into uh, the industry. The field knowledge compared to book knowledge is pretty limited, and then also. The schools teach you to, you know, cover your butt, you would say, by calling out any type of movement indicators, saying it needs to be further evaluated by a structural engineer. You know, there, there's a lot of different cracks on our properties, especially in the Houston, Texas area. We have clay and sandy soils, which cause our foundations to move. And these moves, uh, this movement causes cracking inside the structure and on the exterior of the structure. Your property is designed to move. So with that being said, make sure that you really know what you're looking at before you call out a foundation, because if you go out there and you call out a foundation, you can actually cause a ripple effect with the buyer, the seller and the agents. The seller's gonna say, I've never had a problem before, you know, and the buyer's gonna be like, my inspector said that he had a foundation, you know, there's foundation issues. And then they hire a foundation company. This foundation company will come out and recommend peers because that is how they make money. So if you are an inspector and you don't know what you're looking at when it comes to cracking, what I'd recommend doing is take real, the class with Mike Gandy Real Estate Training Systems. They will teach you how to evaluate a property, the minimum level, you know, a base level to understand what you're looking at and what actually foundation issues look like and how much a slab can take, the tolerances it can take to actually be considered failed. If you are a seller or a buyer and you have a home inspector that came out and recommended for your property to be further evaluated by an engineer, don't call a foundation company. They are going to sell you a foundation. You wanna call a third party engineer they're gonna come out there and evaluate the structure and uh, see if there is issues with it, structural issues. 90% of the time, 99% of the time, your slab is doing what it's intended to do. It's a design to flex and handle the different stresses of the ground around it. So that was a little bit of a long rant, you know, joking about this perfectly fine house, but it's just, this happens a lot in our industry, home inspectors coming out here, writing up foundations when they're perfectly fine. So uh, just make sure that you know what you're looking at, get further educated on the, the process and move from there. So please, if you like these types of videos, please hit the like and subscribe. And if you made it to this end of my long rant, good on you, good on you. I'm impressed. <laughs> All right, see you guys, bye.